All right, you guys, super excited. We got another great video with our buddy Ben right now. We just finished up a great series with him. We're now moving over into the weight belt. So this is kind of a cool one that we decided to do. Probably one of the better guys that I could ever ask questions regarding the weightlifting belt for power lifters. So pay close attention to this video. He gives some really good tips and some things that you don't want to do. So if you're somebody who's getting into weightlifting or you're curious about power lifting and you want to know the right way to use a belt, you want to know what types of belts to use, what sizes of belts, where to wear the belt, and how to use the belt properly, this is the video for you, so check this out. Check out this knowledge that Ben drops in this next video. So, for the squat and deadlift, I've kind of glossed over how important bracing is, and that's really, for me, it's the key to my squat. Before I learned how to squat effectively, how to brace effectively, my squat was somewhere in the low 400s, and then, you know, I, I almost got that 800 squat at my meet yesterday, or Sunday, where I squatted 799, so a lot of that difference has been learning to brace, learning to use my core effectively, and to do that, Again, we're gonna start from the top down. You wanna start kind of with the, the upper chest and the upper abs. And I mentioned how you wanna almost bear down with these upper abs so you're pulling your shoulders over your hips. To do that, you really have to contract your upper abs. And that can be difficult for some people. Some people can't really feel those working, just like how we talked about sometimes it's difficult to feel the lats working, difficult to feel the upper back working. It can be difficult to feel the abs working for some people. If you struggle with this, I find the easiest way is to just do a lot of upper ab work. So I like cable crunches, um, things like that, where you're really having to pull your chest down, have to bear down with your chest over your shoulders. It's gonna teach you to use these, and that's probably the easiest way. But that's how you're gonna start. It's just by bearing down, contracting the upper abs, pulling your shoulders over your hips. The second part is to pull your hips under your shoulders, right? And so that is gonna come from contracting the glutes and contracting the lower abs. Again, if you struggle contracting your lower abs, you wanna look into things like resisted leg lowers, decline crunches, um, hanging leg raises, things like that. They're gonna teach you to use that muscle kind of effectively, isolation exercises that'll teach you to use that muscle effectively. Once I've engaged both my upper and my lower abs, now I need to generate intra-abdominal pressure. So, for most people, they just do that by taking a deep breath into their diaphragm, keeping those abs contracted, but really pushing out, pushing out against your ab wall. And that'll help you keep your core more stable while still recruiting your ab muscles effectively. However, it's difficult for a lot of people to do that. A lot of people struggle with their breathing patterns. They tend to breathe, be more chest breathers, breathe up here, or they struggle really contracting your abs um, and using your abs effectively while doing that breathing. And if that's the case, you might find using a belt really, really helpful to improve your bracing. Even if you don't struggle with it, you might find using a belt really, really helpful because it can provide a kinesthetic cue. It's something that you have to push against and so it can make that bracing easier. And you've got you know, quite a bit of support if you've got a good powerlifting belt, quite a bit of support that's gonna add to your muscles, ability to support your body and support the weight as well. So a belt's a really helpful tool. You'll see some people who talk about, hey, if I throw a belt on, I'm not really using my abs. How am I gonna get my abs stronger, get better ab development? But if you're using the belt correctly, you're using your abs just as hard as you would be without the belt. It's the people who use the belt as a crutch, who just put that thing on and then don't think about their abs, don't think about breathing properly. That's when the belt is something that's gonna take away from your lifts instead of contributing to it. The first thing, you need to find a belt that's the right size for you and the right kind for you. So there's two main types of belts. This is a lever belt. The lever helps to keep the belt closed. If you have a buckle belt, where it's just like your standard type of belt buckle, that's perfectly fine. They work exactly the same. The buckle is a little bit more adjustable. The lever is a little bit easier to get tight. It doesn't really matter. As long as you're using your abs properly, it does not matter what type of belt you have. But it does matter where you put the belt. So I think I mentioned earlier, I have a pretty short torso. So I like to put my belt very low, almost right above my hips. And sometimes it even digs into my hip crease right here but that's just kind of like my preference. Other people, especially people who have longer torsos, they put, prefer the belt up a little bit higher, right around the belly button. They both work, there's no one right answer. And I also find that if you struggle a little bit more to engage your lower abs, it's helpful to have the belt a little bit lower. If you struggle to engage your upper abs, helpful to have, or keep upper back tightness, helpful to keep the belt a little bit higher. But it's not gonna make a huge difference either way. Again, just like in the bench press, you wanna go with what's comfortable. So if it's not comfortable have your belt low like this, go a little bit higher. If you don't feel like having it higher is doing anything for you, try a little bit lower. It's not gonna be a make or break type thing, but it is something that you have to experiment with to find what's right for you. Once you have it on, you have to find the right amount of tightness. You don't want this like a corset. This should not be something where you have to squeeze into and then you can't even breathe once it's on. It should be something where you can probably squeeze kind of a finger in there. It might be a little bit tight, but you can probably get a finger in, maybe even two fingers in between your belt 
and your stomach if you're if you're really trying. You also don't want it loose, right? This is too loose right now. It should not be, I should not be able to do this. It should be a little bit tighter than that. And I'll, I'll put it on tighter in a little bit. Finding that right tightness is very important. If it's too tight, you're not gonna be able to push your abs out. It's just gonna be there. It, there's nothing, nowhere for your abs to go. If it's too loose, again, it's gonna move around on you. And that's no good either because then, you know, you first of all, you gotta think about a shifting belt during the lift. And second of all, it's probably not providing any support that you're looking for. So finding the right amount of tightness, once you've got that, and for me, that's about right here, and you'll notice I can still, I can squish one finger in there. I really can't get two fingers in. And so that's probably about right, but I can still talk. I can still move around pretty comfortably. I'm not, you know, squeezing my organs all over the place. So that's about where I wanna be with the belt tightness. From here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I would without a belt, okay? So I'm gonna brace my upper abs, contract my lower abs, and then I'm really gonna push out against the belt. And when you do that, you should feel the belt move. You should be able to feel the belt moving as you push your abs out against it. That's a big deal because once you can feel that, then you know, okay, hey, I'm doing it right. If they're not moving, probably not doing something right. And so you need to practice a little bit more. You need to practice your breathing. You need to practice your bracing, but the belt will help with that as well. You can use the belt while you're practicing. And this is something that you should keep for every single movement that you do that involves your lower body or involves your core in some way. So for the bench press, it might be a little bit difficult, but for your squat, for your deadlift, for any type of isolation exercises that you're doing for your abs, you don't have to use a belt, but you should still keep that good brace position with the neutral spine, still focus on your breathing. Very, very important for proper core activation and proper core recruitment during multi, multi-joint movements. So I mentioned earlier, this is a lever belt. This is made by Pioneer Fitness. Um, they're a local company out of Texas. They've been around forever. I'm pretty, good friends with the owner, Matt. He's an amazing guy. And actually, if you go look up his YouTube channel, he has comparisons to a lot of other belts. This is not necessarily, one belt's not necessarily better than the other. I do feel like Pioneer is very uh, reliable and uh, again, great company to work for. Best Belts, that's the name of the family. They also make good belts. SBD has a great belt. Um, you can buy these through Elite FTS. You can buy them through, through Matt's site. There's lots of good powerlifting belts out there. The important thing is not so much the brand. The important thing is how the belt's made. So you're looking for something that Generally, for most people, you're gonna be looking for a four inch belt that's between 10 and 13 millimeters. If you're a very small person, just shorter or kind of naturally a little bit more lean or thin, then you might prefer a thinner belt, a three inch belt, and that's fine. And you'll probably want that 10 millimeter. The difference between 10 and 13 millimeter is gonna be a support. So this is a 13 millimeter belt, that's what I prefer. Um, it can restrict your movement a little bit. So if you have difficulty getting position, getting down deep enough in the squat, getting in position for the deadlift, you might prefer the 10 millimeter. You'll be training a little bit of support, you'll be getting more comfort, more mobility. That's the big difference there. The big difference between the buckle and the lever, the lever is gonna help you to get the belt tighter. So you put it in here and then obviously it's the lever, it, it tightens the belt for you. And so you can generally get these, a, a, probably um, a, a belt position to tighter than you would with a buckle belt. Buckle belt is just kind of the standard mechanism that you'll find on any belt you'd use to hold your pants up. Those are good because they're more adjustable, right? So if you're feeling a little bit bloated on a particular day, maybe you had a huge meal before you trained, you can very easily adjust the belt so that it's one loop looser or one loop tighter, depending on how you feel. You can still adjust the lever, but you have to use a screwdriver to do it. So it's gonna be a little bit of a pain. Also, you'll find some tapered belts. You've probably seen bodybuilding belts where they're real thin in the front and real wide in the back. For most people, though, you're gonna to wanna to stay away from those. They're not gonna really help you on your main movements. They're not gonna help you to brace a lot better. They're useful for bodybuilders because bodybuilders try and actually use their abs less. Bodybuilders don't want a whole lot of ab development. It's gonna make their waist look wider. In bodybuilding, you want your waist generally as narrow as possible. And so if they're using the belt properly, they're keeping the belt extremely tight. You know how we talked about not to use it as a corset? Basically using it as a corset. And it's a reminder to make sure they're using actually their transverse abdominus muscle, which is muscle that helps you vacuum, helps you pull your abs in. And when you develop that, it helps you to keep a narrower waist when you're on stage or when you're posing in the gym. And so they use that again as a cue to help practice that, that movement, but it's not helping them to lift more weight. And so if you're trying to lift more weight, you're trying to get bigger, you're trying to get stronger, you probably wanna stay away from those. They need the taper because it's much more comfortable to wear the taper for long periods of time. With a belt like this, you really can only put it on for one set and then you gotta take it off between sets because it just gets in the way. It's kind of uncomfortable. You're probably wearing it, you know, maybe a little bit more tight than you want, but more or less is because the, the belt's pretty big and it gets in the way. And so you wanna take it off in between sets. There are a couple other, you know, 
nuances that you can find with belts. The SBD belt is actually an adjustable lever, so that's kind of cool. You can get belts that have like a quick release buckle that make it very easy to get out of, even though you still have to kind of buckle them. Uh, it might be difficult to buckle them in and get them really tight. And Inzer even makes a ratchet belt that I don't think is legal in powerlifting competitions, but has a type of ratchet mechanism where you can use a use like a little lanyard type thing to make it tight, as tight as you want or as loose as you want. So there are a lot of different gadgets that you can find. Again, the most important thing is making sure you get a belt that's well made, so it's real leather. It's not some cheap, you know, cardboard knockoff type thing, and that it's the right size and the right thickness for you. There's two different routes you can go with this. Some people, again, they feel mentally, if you have a belt on, it's kind of a crutch, and so they only like to put it on for the very heaviest lifts to make sure that they're feeling a little bit more safe. That's okay, but personally, I find that bracing is a skill. Like we talked about, it's kind of complicated, right? Contracting your abs at the same time that you're pushing out and getting comfortable wearing this thick belt. For me, that's kind of difficult. So honestly, I put this on for my first warm-up. And I'll have it loose, I won't have it super tight, but I'll have it there so that I know I'm pushing out against, pushing my abs out against the belt in exactly the same way that I'm gonna do on my very heaviest sets. I wanna make sure that my every single warm up I do looks as close as possible to the, the very heaviest set I'm gonna do that day. And so for that reason, I like to wear the belt um, for every set. Now that only really applies to the movements where I'd like to use a belt. And so more or less, that's the squat or the deadlift. For my assistance movements, um, for most of my pressing movements, I don't wear a belt because I don't find that it helps. I don't find that I need more assistance bracing and I don't find that it helps, the extra support helps me lift more weight. And so I don't use it throughout the entire workout.